On the march! Hiya, hiya, kids. Around the beginning of November, I was clicking around the internet and I found an amazing video. Check it out. I've heard a lot of funny stories and opinions Now to get the whole thing straight You can't keep a bunch of hypocrites and liars All from showing their face But the damage has been done Our battle's not quite won So let's take it to the streets Let's take it to the streets and sing for the sun What I tell you, finally someone was putting together a documentary about electronic cigarettes and vaping that would show the non-vaping public exactly what was going on. When I read the quote from the International Journal of Drug Policy in the video, it has the potential to lead to one of the greatest public health breakthroughs in human history by fundamentally changing the forecast of a billion cigarette-caused deaths this century. I was very impressed that a paper published in the International Journal of Drug Policy was taking such a strong, positive position on electronic cigarettes. I periodically write for a radio program, and this was going to be my next subject, and I wanted to get it on the air as soon as possible. But before I could write one word, I needed to read the entire paper for the quote's context. So back to the internet, Google, and the website. A quick search of the site brought up the paper, Tobacco Harm Reduction, How Rational Public Policy Could Transform a Pandemic authored by David Sweener, Philip Alcabes, and Ernest Drucker. But nowhere in the paper is there any mention of electronic cigarettes or vaping. The quote from the video was taken from the conclusion of the paper. We can reduce tobacco-related death and disease far more rapidly than we can reasonably expect to reduce nicotine use by focusing on the fact that people smoke for the nicotine but die from the smoke. Applying harm reduction principles to public health policies on tobacco nicotine is more than simply a rational and humane policy. It is more than a pragmatic response to a market that is, anyway, already in the process of undergoing significant changes. It has the potential to lead to one of the greatest public health breakthroughs in human history by fundamentally changing the forecast of a billion cigarette-caused deaths this century. The IT in it has the potential to lead to one of the greatest public health breakthroughs in human history is not referring to electronic cigarettes like the video would have you think. The it in the paper refers to applying harm reduction principles to public health policies on tobacco nicotine. Well, that's different. That's not just stretching the truth. That's lying. In fact, the paper lists examples of smoke-free alternatives to cigarettes. The nicotine patch, gum, inhaler, nasal sprays, lozenges, Swedish snus, uh, hard tobacco, moist snuff, spit-free tobacco pouches, and chewing tobacco. Why weren't electronic cigarettes listed? Because the paper was published in March 2007. What type of e-cigs could we buy eight years ago? The kind that didn't work very well. I got this from the ashtray blog. 2007, slow progress. E-cigarettes continued to wallow in obscurity. Some indications show that the FDA became aware of the electronic cigarette around this time, but did not take any action against the devices. E-cigs weren't really on anyone's radar, including the authors of the paper. It's not like there's a lack of positive quotes about e-cigs from reliable sources. 
Years ago, I talked to Dr. Vapor, as he's known on YouTube. He uses e-cigs and has prescribed them for his patients. According to the studies he's researched, using e-cigarettes for 40 years is less harmful to the body than smoking for 30 days. Or Professor Carl Phillips of the University of Alberta School of Public Health, where much of his research focuses on tobacco harm reduction. He said in an interview, the health benefits of switching from tobacco cigarettes are almost exactly the same as the health benefits of quitting. And this applies to electronic cigarettes, smokeless tobacco, and pharmaceutical nicotine. If a smoker can manage to switch from smoking to one of those other products, the benefits are approximately the same as quitting. They lower their cancer risk, they lower their cardiovascular disease risk, they get rid of acute symptoms of lung and airway problems, a risk that comes from smoking for pulmonary diseases and so forth. Switching is so close as good as quitting that from a health point of view, there is no point in worrying about the difference. And Dr. Joel Nitzkin, the chair of the Tobacco Control Task Force of the American Association of Public Health, on April 2, 2010, wrote, AAPHP favors a permissive approach to e-cigarettes because the possibility exists to save the lives of 4 million of the 8 million current adult American smokers who will otherwise die of a tobacco-related illness over the next 20 years. But the filmmakers behind the video took a quote from an 8-year-old paper on tobacco harm reduction and made it look like an endorsement for electronic cigarettes and vaping. So, uh, what's the harm in that? Well, I've been vaping for well over five years, and I think electronic cigarettes do have the potential to lead to one of the greatest public health breakthroughs in human history. And if you used e-cigs to quit smoking, you know what I'm talking about. Hey, we're in the same choir. We don't need a sermon about how effective e-cigs are. We prove it every single day. But this video isn't only for us. It's for all the non-vapers out there, including cigarette smokers. There are billions of dollars riding on who will win the e-cig wars, and big tobacco, big pharma, and big government are betting billions they will. Big um, everybody has all the money in the world they need to spend against our best interests. So who's against us? The FDA, the CDC, the American Lung Association, the American Cancer Society, and the National Association of County and City Health Officials, and, and the list goes on and on. And they constantly lie about electronic cigarettes and vaping. They lie about the nicotine in secondhand vapor when I know there's more nicotine found in a serving of eggplant. But they're not out trying to ban ratatouille, are they? Their entire diatribe against e-cigs and vaping is one huge pile of lies. So one of those things we don't need when going against that pile of lies is a video for a documentary that uses a half lie to sell the movie. You see, when something's not completely honest, it's dishonest. And using that as leverage, Big Tobacco, Big Pharma, and Big uh, Fill-in-the-Blank can stomp the film out of existence by telling everybody, you know, the prospective audience, that the movie is based on a lie. And they have enough money to say that over and over and over again across all media for the next century. And vapors would always be on the defensive. Always. Not exactly a position of strength. All the true things said in the documentary would be diminished by that half lie. That's the way it works. That's how cheesy politicians do it. They find something and harp on it over and over and over again until your ears bleed. They do that because it works. The filmmakers need to make a film as airtight as a legal case, with no openings for the opposition to fault them. This video about the upcoming documentary fails. I hope that when the documentary comes out next year, every single fact and quote used in the film will be rock solid. Because otherwise, the anti-e-cig forces, with deep pockets, rip you to pieces. And the non-vaping public will continue to be not on our side. And worst of all, smokers will be steered away from vaping. We've seen you.